everyone. I'm Carrie Gatto and I'm with Keller Williams Realty and today I'm interviewing a local mompreneur, Stacy Peasley, who is owner of the Stacy Peasley Band and Lucky Day Music. Hi Stacy, how are yes. you? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm great. I'm great. How are you? Doing really well. So nice to see you. Could you um, just start us off by describing your business? businesses? <laughs> sure, sure. So my business um, started a, a total whim. It was never planned. It, it just sort of happened. So I definitely love that part of my story because I feel like that could probably happen to a lot of people if you have an interest in something and you know, something that sort of maybe would start out as a hobby can kind of turn into a successful business. And my field is the creative arts. I'm a singer and a songwriter and a teacher and a performer, but I feel like it could probably translate to many other businesses that, or ideas or hobbies that people have out there, especially women. Um, wow. So I, I yeah, it's been, and it's been 12 years, about 12, 13 years. And I've always been a singer. I've been singing in bands since I'm 18, like adult bands and bars and nightclubs and all that stuff. And I was a teacher during the day, a social studies and English teacher on the middle school level, which I also mm. loved. And after I had my first daughter, I became a stay-at-home mom and started kind of just writing some songs around the house like as a parent you know if you're in, giving them a bath you might sing about bubbles or if you're feeding them you might make up a song about food you know so they eat their dinner and some of these little ditties became ended up becoming songs and i was trying to figure out i've never made a record before i've never made an album like how would i even do this and it was just going to be like a small little thing really for my kids and my family not meaning to kind of get out to the the world um and then i ended up working with a producer of a band that i was a singer in and realized wow making an album is really expensive i'm not sure if a lot of people know that making a record or a record as we still kind of call it um, it's really expensive. You have to rent studio time and pay musicians and pay engineers. And it's very expensive. So I thought, wow, how can I pay for this? So I started doing birthday parties, believe it or not. I had a friend because my kids were little. So I was part of like a mom's group. And they were like, oh, what, why don't you do my son's birthday party? So I started at a fourth birthday party. And then I didn't even play guitar back then. I had a guitar player with me and I sang all the classic songs that kids would want to hear. It was really fun. And so I just kind of, the word of mouth sort of started. And then I just started doing all these parties. And then the parties led to, oh, my son's preschool is looking for a music teacher. Are you interested? So I kind of, this is another sort of piece of the, the interview that I want to get out there is like, I just kind of said yes to everything. Even if I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> I just said, yes, why not? You know, like, what do you have to lose? So yeah. I just started really doing a whole bunch of different, different things musically with children. And then my husband was like, you should learn how to play guitar. So I learned how to play guitar at 35 years old, which is another piece of the interview that I think is important. Awesome. And um, then I went to a music class with my daughter my, and my son, like a mommy and me music class with a friend and we kind of didn't really like it. So my friend was like, I think you should do this. So I was like, okay. So that's another, I just said yes again. And now here it is 12 years later and I have five records out for kids and I have music classes and I perform at libraries and concerts and preschools and daycare centers. And I still try to squeeze in some birthday parties when I can. Um, so it's, it's turned into a multifaceted children's music business. And I love every aspect of it. It's been a lot of fun. That is so fun <laughs> for you. And so, and you have a band too that performs yes. with you. Okay. Yeah. So I have a whole band and it's funny because when I started this, I was doing it by myself with just one guitar player until I learned how to play guitar. And I hadn't hired a band yet, but I've always sang in bands since I'm like 18 years old. So I love a full band and that's really what I eventually wanted to do. 
And I was booked in the town of Needham for one of my first performances. And the woman was like, you know, do you have a band? And I said, well, no, not yet. And she said, oh, well, I booked you as a band and we're marketing this as a band. So I was like, okay, I better get a band together. So then I got the band together and we did that gig and many, many others. And I still have one member, a few members over the years have moved away and things like that, but I still have my guitar players still with me after like, I think this will be our 13th maybe our 13th summer or 13th year together, 12th or 13th year that we Whoa. play out with the whole band. Yeah. And do you write all the songs on I your record? Do. Yes, yeah. I do. We've done a couple of covers here and there, um, but that's the other thing I love. I love writing songs and music for kids. I just love it. And it just, it just never, never goes away. Yeah, it just, awesome. it just keeps coming, which I love. What a great story. Thanks. Um, <laughs> and so, I mean, I feel like it's silly to even ask this, but what motivates you to keep doing what you do? Seems like I it's know, just that's a good question. Um, because as I get a little older, <laughs> sometimes I do feel like, do I still have this in me? You know, especially summertime. Um, you know, we try, so my, it's like, my day is just, I could be anywhere at any time. There's no predictable regular schedule. So I could have it like, you know, in the summertime, I could have a show at 6.30 at night in Walpole, or I could have a show 10.30 in the morning in Burlington. You know, it's, it's like you're a total traveling salesperson kind of, um, and it's hot and it's outdoors and, you know, we, we're singing and, you know, they really don't cancel. They don't really cancel usually. So it could be like 95 degrees out and you have to sing and perform like a 45 minute set with, you know, energy. And so every summer I'm kind of like, am I getting too old for this? But yeah. it's just, it's all I've done, you know, since I'm 18 has been playing. I mean, you know, as far as, like I said, it was a hobby and then now turned into kind of a, a career, but, you know, so it, it's just part of me. It's like who I am. and same thing with the other pieces of of the job you know like on a Tuesday I run a music class on a Friday I run a music class this morning I was at the Needham library on um, Wednesday I was at a school Monday I was at a different school so my weekdays also I'm in a different place every day mm -hmm. so it's just kind of like who I am and um and the kids motivate me for sure the most. I mean, being with them is just, I mean, I always joke, I'm like surrounded by like rainbows and unicorns and the happiest. I always joke, I'm like, everybody loves seeing the lady with the guitar walk in their classroom, you know? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, music. so it's, it's great. It's really fun. And how about your music classes? You're teaching kids about music or how to do music too, right? Yeah, and it's little, it's really for little kids, you know, so it's ages like four or five and under. So it's by no means any kind of formal instruction, um, mm -hmm. but it's instrument exploration. It's, um, you know, songs and music that, that have lay a foundation for like early childhood literacy and rhythm and patterns and language and rhyming and, you know, just being comfortable singing, a lot of movement, a lot of physical movement, jumping and spinning around and pretending to be dinosaurs. And um, wow. so it's it's not formal education by any means, but I'm hope hopefully it's laying a foundation for yeah. the future for them to love music and um, right. and keep it keep it going somewhere in there. It's funny because a little girl that I um, I did her fifth birthday party. Mm -hmm. 12 years ago and she just entered and won a contest and sang with Keith Lockhart and the Boston Pops last two nights ago Stop. yeah yeah mm -hmm. and I've known her I did her part at her birthday party when she was five and she always loved music and um, wow. I had her brothers in my music classes and she is a singer now she's amazing and and she just sang with the pops like two days ago so the little kids that i started with all those years ago are now like really growing up and and uh luckily with facebook i get to keep in touch with a lot of parents and see if they're in a play yeah. or in a show or taking an instrument so that's been really fun also 
Yeah, that's amazing. It's like yeah. lighting that. Spot. Yeah, I yeah. hope so. I hope so. And I also hope I, I try to think about I hope it serves as a good memory for parents also, you know, remembering because my kids are older now. I have a 17, a 15 and a nine year old. So I think back to the early days of parenting and the activities that I did and the places I took them. And, and I, I always hope that either my music or my classes or my shows is something that they'll look back on as part of their parenting experience, you know? For sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it sounds like a great birthday party idea. Yeah. To, um, I always like to ask um, mompreneurs, um, you know, do you have any like funny story you want to share about the mom, the working mom thing or a tip for other mompreneurs and working moms? Yeah, I do have a story actually that comes to mind. It's not, it wasn't funny at the time. And my son is in, although he has his earbuds in, but he's sort of an earshot. He might hear this. Um, I did a show. So a friend of mine was performing. I think it was at, oh my goodness, the name of the venue is escaping me. It's the sculpt, the court of a sculpture park. That's where it was. It was like a little event. And he had asked me, I was kind of just starting out. And he asked me to sort of like open for him. I didn't have a babysitter. So I brought my two kids with me. And at that point, they were probably like four and two, maybe. Oh, and maybe. I packed snacks. I packed coloring books, toys, you know, what, the stroller, whatever I could, whatever I could um, bring that hopefully could entertain them for like 30 minutes. It's funny, right. my daughter's walking in now too. And she's, she's one of the culprits of the story. So I set up, so they were kind of in front of me with all their stuff. And they start misbehaving really badly. And I'm on stage and I'm singing my guitar and I'm, and I'm trying, I'm like giving them the, the evil eye death stare as best I could. They were like fighting, like hitting each other, like so bad. And there was nothing I could do about it. Like, I just, I couldn't, I was like, what am I going to do? So I just had to keep, you know, singing and smiling. And thank goodness the gig finally ended. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I literally cried the whole way home. I cried in my car the whole way home. Yeah, they were so bad. And there was, I was like, helpless. There was nothing I could do. And obviously it was like embarrassing. It was just terrible. So bringing your kids to work unsupervised is not always the best. I mean, I, I was the supervisor, but I couldn't do anything about it. Exactly. <laughs> so from yeah. that point on, I always had an extra set of hands with me if I had to bring my, my kids to, to a show. <laughs> and that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was a very long time yeah. ago. Oh, lesson learned. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's funny. It's funny now, but it was not funny at the time. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, thank you for sharing, and thank you so much for um, for sharing about your business and what you do and your story today. Oh, it's thank so you. Lastly, how can we, how can people buy your music and get in touch with you about events, parties, classes, et cetera? Oh, cool. So I do have a website, which is stacypeasley.com. Um, I also have an Instagram and a Facebook. Those are under the Stacy Peasley band. And all my music nowadays, you know, we used to sell CDs when I first started, but now everything's online. So all my music is on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, YouTube, Pandora, some of it's on Pandora, not all of it. Um, all the awesome. streaming services that, that anybody would use. If you just type in Stacey Peasley, all my music will come up. And I would love for people to hear it because, um, you know, like I said, the songwriting to me is such an important piece and I love it. So I just love when, when I know people are listening to my music at home or in their cars or wherever, wherever they are. Or yeah, yeah, I can't wait to listen with my four-year-old. Oh, perfect good. age. Yeah. And and what's your preferred method of listening these days? 
Um, usually iTunes, iTunes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's so crazy now. I always ask because it's like, like I said, it used to be you just had a CD and everyone would buy it at your show and you knew they were listening to it. And now it's like, you're just like throwing your music out there and you're just wondering like, how, how are people listening? Where are they finding it? It's really, it's changed a lot. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Yes, well, thank you again. And thank you everyone for watching today. And we'll see you next time on Let's Get Down to Business. Yay, thank you.